Our second video of the Age of Exploration begins after the voyages of Marco Polo, or the exploration of Marco Polo, and we're going to look at how some other explorers made it to India, and some of the history behind just the, the entire age where people were looking and looking and trying and dying to find new ways to India, new ways to Asia, so that they could bring back spices, bring back all kinds of rare goods, spices, fruits, and um, make a name for themselves and make money. So Europeans wanted to find an all-water route to Asia, but they had to overcome some major problems. Their knowledge of sailing was limited, and no one had ever even been to the bottom of Africa as the compass hadn't really been, it, it, it says here it hasn't been invented yet, but it was invented, but it hadn't really been perfected and spread into Europe. Europeans did not have the technology that Asian, uh, Air, Asian nations did. China, they had the compass, they had all really good maps, but Europeans didn't. And Europe kind of lived in what we call a vacuum. They're, they were shut off from the rest of the world, from basically... 500 AD to about 1100 AD when the Crusades happened. So we're looking at like 600 years of very limited contact with the outside world. So that brought along with it a lot of different issues. They didn't have the technology like letter A says that other nations did. Letter B, there was a good possibility that the world was flat and you might sail off the edge if you went out of sight of land. Some people believed that at the time. Now in educated circles, they didn't. But we're, we're talking about uh, sailors who were not philosophers and scientists of the age. Uh, letter C, if you went south beyond the equator, the ocean might boil you. Because many of these sailors, all they knew was as you go south, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And so it was kind of scary for them. And then finally, sea monsters. Who knew what was out there? We're dealing with a population that was very, um, very scared of the unknown, and they were very superstitious. So those are huge challenges, huge challenges that the, these early explorers faced. And so they're famous and brave because they were dealing with, with a lot of fear, and they were overcoming a lot of fear and a lot of the unknown. Um, the Portuguese were the first sailors to reach India and China by sea. Vasco da Gama, he sailed around Africa and reached India in 1497. And you can see that his route, the purple route, uh, goes all the way down around and goes quite far out into the Atlantic Ocean. Um, didn't just hug the coast like Diaz did, but he went all the way over to India, reached the other side of Africa even, and found all kinds of interesting spices. And then he went on to Asia. So the Portuguese were the first nation to reach um, India and Asia, the first European nation, that is. And then we get to Christopher Columbus. Now, Christopher Columbus is who we're going to be focusing on quite a bit because he's, he's well known and also he is like the poster child, the poster boy in America for these great explorers. And you've heard of him and you've learned about him all the way up until now. So let's see, uh, let's talk about Christopher Columbus a little bit. In 1492, the search for an all-water route to Asia led Christopher Columbus to make a discovery that would change not only the old world of Europe, but also the unknown new world, which would, be, which would become known as the Americas. He would never really understand what he had done. He called the people from this new world Indians because he thought he was in the Indies. His name was Columbus. He believed, first of all, that he could reach Asia by sailing west across the Atlantic Ocean. And he believed that for a variety of reasons. And we're going to look at that during class. And um, he, he, you have to give him credit. He was brave. He went into the unknown. And he, he was a very smart guy. All right, so whatever mistakes, whatever bad things you hear about him, there are equal numbers of good things. And he, he's kind of a mystery. He did a lot of great things. He also did a lot of horrible things that we'll discuss in class. 
Here's a map that uh, Columbus may have used, or at least had seen. And if you look at it closely, there is a huge problem. There is, There are two continents that are missing, and that's pretty big. Also, there are islands that don't even exist. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. Think about it. These guys are going off into the ocean on a little tiny boat and tiny ships, and they don't even know where they're headed. They kind of have an idea, but they don't know what's out there. Here's another map. This is a map of Europe, Asia, and Africa, and you can see that it's really messed up. All right, and I, we're going to talk about this in class. So just take a look. Keep this on your mind. Okay, Columbus was a brave and skillful, skillful sailor. His voyage brought two very different worlds in contact for each other. He searched, and his search for gold and glory led him to enslave the people he met in this new world. And this just opens up the big, a huge can of worms to talk about. So um, let's get down to some details here. Wherever Columbus landed, he claimed the land for the king of Spain. This was the beginning of the Spanish colonization of the Americas. And Spain ends up controlling most of South America, most of Central America, and on into um, North America. And Spain is a major player in colonizing in the world. Now, Columbus did not discover America. He wasn't the first to come here. There were um, Vikings in the in the thousands, 700, 800 A.D. There were other European explorers that may have arrived here before him. Uh, but he, the thing is, and he didn't even prove that the world was round because people all the way back to Greece knew that the world was round based on mathematical calculations. And he even thought that he was near Asia. And he was, but he was one of the first of many European explorers who had come to the Americas. And he started colonizing. That's what's important, is that he brought people here, and he brought Spanish people here, and he left them here. And then he brought more Spanish people here and left them here. He documented his journey. He, start, he opened up the new world to the old world.